Right now is the British accent. So historians believe humans started to migrate to England from the North Sea in the 5th century. English as a language was brought to England from the Germanic tribe who migrated to England. Later, the language was brought to other nations such as the United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, Ireland, Scotland, New Zealand, and also the United States of America. However, what is known as the current British accent did not arise until the mid-1700s. In fact, English and American used to speak the same accent during the initial British migration to the US. But contrary to what most people believe, this accent was really similar to what American speaks now. In other words, it was more of a erotic accent. So erotic accent is where the R is pronounced noticeably. So, all right. Now, however, toward the 1770s, during the American, what is known as the American Revolution, the British accent started to change. The non erotic accent started to becoming more popular in the upper classes. The difference started because a lot of English people started to suddenly become wealthy. That is the result of the Industrial Revolution in England. They wanted to find a way to distinguish themselves from the poorer classes. That is why they adopted this new non erotic accent, which is known as the current British accent. So this is how the native British speaker speaks the English accent. All right, that is basically all for the British accent. On to the next accent. The American accent. In the 18th century, whether declaring America's independence or pledging loyalty of King George, pronunciation were very much the same. There was no distinction between the American and British English as both accents were largely rhotic. Rhotic speakers, which was considered as traditional American English, pronounced the R sound in words such as winter. During the American Revolution, non rhotic speech came into use amongst the Britons who had immersed wealth during the Industrial Revolution. They wanted to distinguish themselves from other commoners Hence, cultivating the prestigious non rhotic pronunciation to demonstrate their new status. Now, on to the next accent. Alright, so now the Australian accent. The earliest form of Australian English was spoken by the children of the colonists in early New South Wales. This first generation of Australian birth children created a new dialect of English that became the dialect primarily spoke in Australia. The Australian bird children in the new colony were exposed to a wide range of dialects from around the British Isles, in particular from Ireland and South East England. The Australian bird children in the colony created a new dialect from the speech they heard around them, and with it expressed their solidarity. Even when new settlers arrived, this new dialect was strong enough to blunt other patterns of speech. A quarter of the conflict were Irish, many had been arrested in Ireland, and some in Great Britain. Many of the Irish spoke Irish and either not English at all, or spoke it poorly and rarely. There were a significant population of conflicts from non-English speaking parts of Britain, such as Scottish Hines and Wales. Record from the 19th century showed this distinct dialect colony after the first settlement in 1788. Peter Miller Cunningham, 1827's book, Two Years in New South Wales, described the new distinct accent and vocabulary of the native born colonies. They different from of their parents and with a strong London influence. Linguist Anthony Birds considered that Australian English may be taught 
of as a kind of facial cockney of the Dickensian area. And this is how the native speaker speak the accent. And that's all. Thanks for watching AdFits. That's better, isn't it? You've got dirt on your nose, by the way. Did you know? No, I would not care to join you and Victor. Do you sing anything other than that country and western shape? Oh, sorry, what's going on with country and western, western, mate? Buster Moon. Buster Moon, yeah, right. Yeah, and he, right. What, he wants, what he wants to do is get everyone over. To the Good day. Good day, mate. Here's a gun. Hey. Mark, what is this? Oh, what? This. It's called a cease and desist letter. What were their names? Who? It's Lincoln 30 to dispatch. Yeah, no, 30, go ahead. Yeah, that's a wild goose chase over here at Nakatomi Plaza. Everything here is okay. Hey, we don't serve their kind here. What? You're a droid. They'll have to wait outside. We don't want them here. Nice way out by the speeder. We don't want to be in trouble. I heartily agree with you, sir. 